just been listening to my next guest, who's been described as the greatest jazz pianist of his generation. Although he was born with a rare and incurable bone disease, Michel Petrucciani has overcome his disability to become one of the biggest names in modern jazz. First inspired at the age of four, just four years old, by the work of Duke Ellington, his greatest love is improvisation. He's played with some of the biggest names in jazz. And just a few nights ago at a concert in London, the crowds were queuing up to shake his hand after the performance. His latest album, live at the Champs-Élysées Theatre, opens with a full 45 minutes of non-stop improvisation around his favourite composers. Although he won't quite be repeating that feat today, I'm delighted to welcome Michel Petrucciani. What were you playing for me just now? Where was, was that from? It was just the beginning of a new song called Romantic But Not Blue. You played 45 minutes in the opening of your new album. Improvise for 45 minutes, is that well, right? Not really improvising. It's uh, uh, a random of all the composers, uh, composers that I love, like Duke Ellington, uh, Herbie Hancock, uh, Cosma, who is a French composer that wrote uh, Autumn Leaves, mm -hmm. um, uh, Roger and Hearts, Gershwin, uh, Theronius Monk. Uh -huh. So I do a lot of that, you know, and I mix all the songs together. But uh, what is most important is more the composers than the actual songs, because uh, in each of the composers you have their own identity. Ah, so where, so do you begin, where do you begin? Is it, is it the beginning that's important for you? So if you think of Duke Ellington, is that, is, is that the most important part for you in the improvisation, the rest flows on, or do you have to really construct it before you start? Well, you, you play uh, uh, the, the composer's music, and then you improvise on that. Um, but you see, uh, Duke Ellington, for instance, for me is the classical composer of the 21st century, because jazz is, uh, for me, the classical music of tomorrow. And he, you can't look past him then? You, can't, you can understand and appreciate all the others, but he is the one that you hold dear because he was the first one that you listened to? Well, I guess he, he influenced me, he kind of touched my heart uh, at first, when you first uh, love something. You know, I, I come from a musical uh, family, and. Uh, I knew about Oscar Peterson, I knew about Art Tatum, I knew about Miles Davis, Bill Evans. Uh, but um, when I saw Duke Ellington, I said, well, this is the, what I want to do. I saw this big piano and the big, uh, big band behind him, and I said, I would like to do that. I would like to be able to try to do that one day. And uh, he really touched my, my heart. Mm -hmm. Give me a little bit of Duke Ellington. Just play something for me which touches your heart even now. Can you think well, of something which... There is a very, uh, very famous uh, Duke Ellington song called Take the A Train. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried, I did an arrangement for that, uh, which is, sounds a little bit like the train. You know, the A Train is a train that you go from Brooklyn uh, to Harlem to New York. Right. Okay? So it goes like this.
shivers. I mean, that's put shivers all up and down my arms. I mean, it's just a little technical thing, but it, you know, it's a little technical thing, is it? The idea is just to get the train running, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, and then to improvise on the melody and so on. But the power, I mean, is it the power? Where does all that come from with you? Um, to work, <laughs> a lot of yeah. work, I guess. You think it's a lot of work? I was just thinking about the, well, the <coughs> energy. I mean, I do this job, I come in, I do my job, and uh -huh. I, I feel as though sometimes it's, it's, it's drained, sometimes. And you're doing this, we talked about an improvisation for 45 minutes at the beginning of your new album. Right. For 45 minutes, it, that's something that most people wouldn't contemplate doing. Well, I, I lost a, a tendon in my finger um, because of that, because I work so much doing that. It's a very you know, difficult physically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always um, deal with the piano uh, solo like a boxing match. You know, it's me and the piano, and it's very aggressive with, uh, with a lot of sweetness into it, you know, because I like to play uh, uh, sweet chords and uh, take my time. But it's very physical anyway. But why? Uh, uh, just because why? I like it that way, Have I guess. Have you always been like that? Uh, I guess it's my Italian temper, you know, like, mm -hmm. aggressivo. But you were born in France, weren't you? I was you? born in France, yes. Yeah. Were you born in Orange? I was born in Orange. And your father was a musician? My father is a musician. Is still and, a musician. Uh, he's a teacher. Uh, he teaches a school. Uh, uh, jazz guitar and classic guitar as well. Mm -hmm. And I have two older brothers. They also play music, bass yeah. and drums. And, and guitar, I'm sorry. All right. So in a musical family, you had to fight your way, presumably the aggression you were talking about a minute or two ago, you had to fight your way to be, what, recognized, to have your talent recognized in <coughs> any way? No, you know, uh, I started uh, to play because I love to play. Uh, it's my life. And uh, I never intended, uh, it never intended to become a profession for me. I just started uh, playing, and I play for my friends, and people say, well, we like to listen to Michelle again. And uh, this lasted a long time, and then after a while I said, well, uh, I can't just keep playing for my friends, I have to make a living. So I started asking for money. <laughs> or I didn't ask actually for money at first, I asked for food. Oh, as bad as that yeah, was it? Yeah, but, oh, no, well, we used to go to restaurants and stuff, and I have a lot of friends following me around, and they were all more or less uh, semi-homeless, you know, it was like uh, a long time ago, and, and uh, we said, okay, you, you make a sandwich for everybody, and I pray for an hour, you know, so it was like that, we started like that, and then uh, uh, I went to Paris, and I made my first record with um, uh, a guy that's, I guess, is very well known here in England, he writes for the Herald Tribune, his name is Michael Zwerin, mm -hmm. he's a journalist, mm -hmm. and he plays the trombone, and uh, we did uh, uh, the first, my first records together, and uh, I started working professionally, and uh, I was 16 by then. And uh, at the age of 18, uh, a friend of mine wrote me a letter and said, you have to come to California. California is too great. Uh, you know, there's a lot of beautiful women there, and this and that. And I said, okay. I was like a teenager. I said, I have to go. Check it out. So I went there, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to California, and uh, I stayed. I stayed. I love the people. I love, uh, uh, I like American people very much because uh, there's so many differences there that I felt like home. Mm -hmm. Did it, you didn't feel at any stage in your life? I mean, you had your mates around you, your friends in France, and then you went to California, not speaking a word of English, right. being, being very French, having to learn the language, and having to play. Did you, do you find that your, your playing overcomes the immediate thought and sight of you? Because a lot of, I mean, you must have, in your growing up period, felt, well, people were looking at me because of the way I look rather than the way I sound, the way my music well, is. You know, I always believe that we're all handicaps in some ways. Uh, my handicap is very visual. You could see it right away. You see that I'm different. Uh, I like to talk more about a difference than a handicap because I have a very normal life. In fact, I have a super life because I travel all around and uh, I'm very busy and I move more than somebody that is on a wheelchair sometimes, you know. Uh, so uh, I, I believe that we all have a difference. But does it take a lot out of you? I, I asked you a while ago about the energy, then you, we talked about your regression, but at the end of the day, do you, do you get to home at night and get into bed and think, oh, I can't get out of bed at all, I'm so tired, my arms are hurting so no, much? No, I like to work. Um, I have a lot of, a lot of energy. Uh, that has nothing to do with my handicap. My handicap, you know, is about, let's talk a little uh, medicine here. Um, my handicap is about bones, and I have mm -hmm. fragile bones. And, uh, but the rest of my... Uh, being is completely normal, and uh, so I don't have any problem with the rest of you know, the heart and all of that. Everything works very well. 
Uh, it's just that uh, at the, when I was born, they didn't have uh, the right medicine and the right uh, technique to cure that, that uh, disease. So I spent a lot of time in caste. And because I spent a lot of time in caste, it kind of stunned my growth. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, it's very different. If you're born with that disease, they could put rods in your bones, teles telescopic uh, rods, so they grow with the, with the child, you know. And so it's a little different nowadays. Your parents must have been remarkable people. Your father is a remarkable man to, to not only have to look after you and, and worry about you on that level, but also to make sure that you sat down and learned to play the piano. I mean, it, it, all kids go through a period saying, I don't want to learn the piano. I don't want to put in the hours. I mean, why are you forcing me to go and do all of this? And yet, well, obviously, they, you, they helped you, didn't they? Yeah, my father was, because it was really part of the, the family's business, really. The, the music was, uh, music was my mother's milk, as I say all the time, mm -hmm. and the music, and jazz music, in fact, not even, uh, I, I learned how to, to um, I discovered later on classical music and uh, rock and roll and uh, other types of music. But uh, in fact, jazz is something that I knew since I was a little child. Uh, so when you got to California and you started to meet some of these so people, I I went to California and uh, I met, I, I went to see live some of the people that I used to listen on records. And that was great. And then uh, I ended up at uh, somebody's uh, house by the name of Charles Lloyd, who was a very uh, famous saxophone player in the 60s during the flower people time, you know. And uh, he had stopped playing for 10 years. And uh, I came to his house, he said, what do you do? I said, well, I tried to play the piano. He said, there's a piano here. Why don't you sit down and play some? So he was sitting a little bit where you are now. And uh, I stopped playing for him. And uh, he disappeared. And I thought to myself, well, I must have bored him to death. <laughs> and uh, he went to his uh, garage and picked up his saxophone, things that he hasn't done in 10 years. And he started playing with me. And we played all night, all day. Mm -hmm. We didn't stop playing for about I think 24 hours. And he said, OK, I want you to stay here, and I want to start going on stage again. So since he was so famous in, in America, when he decided to make a comeback, I had a lot of uh, press and newspapers and TV and the Johnny Carson show, and you know, we did all of that. So it was a w big opening for me in the United States, which is a very difficult thing to do, to come in the jazz uh, business uh, and being a European because, you know, it's already very difficult for American people. So when you arrive, you kind of steal something that is not yours, you know, because jazz music is definitely a black American art form. And you come from all France, and you say, OK, here I am playing with a, uh, a great saxophone player here in America. Uh, it was difficult at first. I bet. I bet did wonder to the girls, though, listening to you on the Johnny Carson show and hearing about you and reading about you and all, the, all those kind of things. Well, it Michelle. lasted for about six months. Yeah. And then nobody ever heard about me after that. <laughs> Everybody forgot. <laughs> Not in any way whatsoever ever did they forget. <laughs> it's the truth, though. We're going to take a little break. I'm going to come back. I want to hear some more music from you. So um, just hang around for a little while longer. We'll be back. I'm talking to Michelle Petrucciani. In just a moment, stay with me. say your name over and over again. It's good that I want to say your name over and over again, Michelle Petrucciani, because people who just switched on, heard you playing, might not think, might not know who you are. But the name is great, isn't it? Half French, half Italian. That's correct. Pure Italian blood. Uh, no, half Italian blood. Half Italian half blood. Half French. With a proper Californian accent. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Could I you get a New York accent, do you want a cup of coffee? <laughs> well, I They talk like this in New York. <laughs> And Michel Petrucciani likes his um, Doc Martin. Oh, yeah, I bought him today. Where's the camera? Let's Here. have a look. Here, check it out. <laughs> Shelley's. Check, check out his Doc Martin. There they go. Dig this. They're very cute. Not bad with a little thing here. Oh, yeah. That's nice. 
you can... This is my uh, fingers. <laughs> to, your hands are very mobile, aren't they? I mean, you, earlier on today, you were showing me how you can stretch from that finger through to that. The span is... I can stretch a lot of things. Is in the, <laughs> 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 <be naughty. laughs> I'm not naughty. <laughs> <laughs> but you can. Just put your finger on top of the piano again. There. That's right. See? Go on. Don't add. You're being... There. You can stretch, right? It's almost like like a ballet dancer with doing in points. Five. Well, yeah, just position. Just stretch your fingers. No, as far as you can, like this. Like that? More, more, more. Uh, Try uh, that's as far as I can go. Go closer. Okay. Uh, well, then you can do that. Hello. I can do that too. Like a little escargot. Uh, uh, a little escargot. Yeah. Yes. Do you eat escargots too? Yeah, well, French, oh. of course. And frogs. Oh. Of course. Oh. But, but of course. Oh. Do you play more in France now than you do anywhere in the world? No, uh, I play a lot in Germany, in France, in Italy, in Switzerland, um, England, um, more and more. Uh, it's, taken a a, it's taken a while, hasn't it, in yeah, England? Well, yeah, but I mean, you, you, uh, I have to say that uh, the English people are very nice to me. I mean, uh, we did a very successful concert uh, Saturday. You bet. Uh, mm -hmm. It was really nice. Um, the, a difficult market for us is Spain. Spain is e extremely difficult, and you were talking off the show about Israel, which is very good also. They love jazz there. And I love Israel. It's a very nice place. Do you find it, you, you can handle it now, this, this adulation? Because you said you had a very good concert in England. Well, I know that they got up there and they queued afterwards to see you, to shake your hand, that they gave you standing ovations. They just loved you and your music. And, and you find, having traveled so much, and having been with so many famous jazz musicians yourself, that it becomes kind of easier for you as you go through your life, handling the adulation from all these people? Well, uh, um... My concern is not uh, that, really. My concern is to, uh, to keep uh, studying the piano and learning mm. music. You feel you can still learn? Absolutely. I mean, what, if, what can you still learn? So many things. Uh, concentrations, uh, sound, uh, writing more music, uh, 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 full of projects that I have. I mean, I have uh, so many things I want to do that I didn't yet, you know, become very close to do it. Um, but isn't it a gift from God? I'm listening. I, if I stand back here or lean back here and I see your, your face and I don't see your hands, and I just shut my eyes and listen. It is like, it's like something that's out of this world. It's, it's something that comes from somewhere else, it almost You know, seems. people said uh, some people are gifted, some, some are not. Uh, I don't really believe in that. Uh, I believe in hard work. Uh, the only thing I could say is that between the difference between a gifted one and a, gift, and a not gifted one is that if you spend 10 minutes behind your piano and you have the feeling that you spend four hours, you're not very gifted. And if you spend four hours and you have the feeling that you only spend 10 minutes, then you are very gifted. So what you're Meaning saying... that you love what you do. Yes. And uh, this is very... The difference between people that can make it easier is because they love what they do. And uh, I do love to play the piano. I love to sit down behind the piano. Uh, I can spend all day uh, just... Uh, uh, playing the piano, but uh, you know, I can make phone calls, I watch TV, uh, <laughs> I, I stay behind the piano, it's like my office, mm -hmm. you know, I talk to my wife, uh, you know, my kids, and mm -hmm. you know, so I move, I have a cup of coffee and I come back, so for me the piano is, uh, is a very comfortable element. How many kids do you have? I have two children, two D boys. And are they like you, gifted with music? Uh, well, the, the, I put the youngest one, who's six years old, to the violin, uh, not long ago, in fact, three or four days ago. And it was great because a friend of mine gave him a, a little violin like this and he played it and he had big eyes, you know, and he was looking at me going, am I doing okay? You know? mm -hmm. It was really great. I mean, it's, uh, it's more or less a, a phantasm of the father. Yes. I, would, I would love for him to play the violin. You yeah. know? Like your dad wanted you to play. So do you, do you believe in disciplining him? Will you, if he says, oh, dad, I don't want to do any more of this, will you still say, now you must? Well... It's a good question, and it's a hard question to, to answer, because uh, uh, music is so difficult. And um, because I am really professional in what I do, and uh, uh, I make a career out of doing that, I mean, I make my living out of playing the piano, uh, I don't think I'll be as hard as my father. My father was very hard because he was determined uh, to put us, the three boys, you know, into mm -hmm. being professional and to make a, a, a job out of uh, playing music. Um, he, I think he wanted to be a concertist, you know, he wanted to do concerts, mm -hmm. uh, and he really couldn't to the extent that he had imagined for himself. So he tried to put his, you know, again, his phantasm through his boys. You do know, you regret his that? I mean, do you resent that now, looking back and what your no, father No, you know, it's uh, like uh, Picasso used to say, you're a court on a river, you could go right or left, and all you have to do is look 
straightforward and this is what happened to me. I, I was put behind a piano and now I am doing this and, and this is my life and uh, I could go right or left and um, mm -hmm. all I want to do is get better. So when you say get better and you want to learn and you want to improve, does it take other people to help you improve? Does it take other musicians? You it go takes to other musicians, it takes uh, uh, listening to a lot of people. I listen to a lot of music, rock and roll. Uh, I love uh, Prince, I love Madonna, mm -hmm. uh, I love Michael Jackson, uh, I love Jimi Hendrix, um, I like Mozart, uh, I love uh, Jean-Sébastien Bach, you know, it goes from, when people say, what do you listen, what kind of music do you listen, I said, it goes from Bach to Jimi Hendrix. Well, can you, you do know? that? I mean, can, can you right now on this piano give me an example of how modern music, how rock music can affect you well, and the way you play? Uh, it's just the sounds and, uh, you know, uh, classical music had uh, brought to the, the what so-called modern music, the harmony, mm -hmm. you know, because before it was a chord like this, you know, you, you know, like that, and then uh, people like um, Rachmaninoff invented chords like this. This is more like classical, and then jazz brought the tempo into that. Mm -hmm. So you know, you could uh, uh, put a piece like this. a mix of you know classical and jazz but the drama but the drama in it is that rise isn't it it's that holding of an audience and yeah. making sure they don't ever leave you it's that that's a technique as much as anything else i would imagine well that's concentration that's concentration yeah, yeah i saw you were, you were having that's a concentration why that's why i've looked before a little bit a little bit <laughs> who is the who is the who is the, the man or the woman that you most i mean it's kind of corny question but the the man or the woman you most admire as a musician in this world today well uh, there's a lot, in fact. Uh, living um, living uh, piano player uh, uh, is Herbie Hancock. I really love uh, his playing. Um, uh, dead is always Miles Davis because he really mm -hmm. taught a lot to young people, to young musicians. Uh, you always say the right things for them to keep going and give a lot of encouragement. Um, otherwise, there's so many people. Out of America more than in, in Europe, or, or is it fairly evenly split? I and mean, is the tradition still in America? We talked about well, black, black jazz musicians, the, the heritage no, of all No, saying black jazz musician, uh, it's a little bit um, too confined in one corner, you know. I think it's a black American art form, but there are musicians from all over the world that are just as good and just as bad, you know. So. Um, You've been playing with Stefan Grappelli, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, he's Ooh. great. He's 88 years old. It's amazing. It was it? great. It was great to work with him. Um, but you know, music is universal. Uh, there's no language for music. Uh, jazz uh, in Europe now is working very well, much better than in, than in America. Uh, Why much better than in America? That's strange, isn't it? Because the, I think the audience, uh, there's more audience in Europe now, nowadays, for jazz music than in than there is in America. In America, you know, we have a uh, saying in French saying, nobody is a prophet in his own country. Mm -hmm. And uh, jazz music is American, so because it's American, when you go there, you don't have uh, the, the fans, you know, the jazz fans like, like in Europe, like, uh, you know, when Miles Davis used to come to France, he loved France because people loved him. They loved his music. And uh, uh, French people really love jazz, German, uh, English, uh, you know, in America, it's more like you go and you go to a bar to listen to jazz. People go and eat. They eat food and they drink and they, they make a lot of noise and they talk. So it's not the same respect, but you still have uh, a lot of talents in America, which you maybe don't have as much in Europe. But now again, with the United Europe, you know, it's becoming a big country. So um, you have a lot of talent too. You're sounding like a little politician, a diplomat, and I think that's very good. I think that's great. It's been a treat. Thank you very much, Thank you. Michelle Petrucciani. I'm going to say goodbye. We're back again tomorrow night at half past seven Central European time. Do join us then. Don't do that. Oh, no, you don't do that. I'm going to have you play us out. I'm going to have you play us to the end of the show. This is going to be my time to sit back and listen okay. to you. 
Thank you very much. A French song for you. Thank you.